Hello and welcome to another STEM in the Box instructional video. Today we're looking at the animation example, the Pong game, and we're just going to run through uh, all of the tasks, the core tasks and the extension tasks, one by one, uh, for you to get some idea of what to do. How does the Pong game work? Well, first thing we can do is just have a quick look at um, using it. So we're just going to start the game here. Great, that's enough. So let's have a look at the code. Over on the right hand side, we can see that the first thing that happens is uh, there's a go to block x20 y150. So what that does is it positions the ball sprite at position X20 and Y150, which is oh, about there. Okay, great. Now the next thing is it points at direction 45, which is 45 degrees off the 12 o'clock uh, position. Now the general movement of the ball as it moves down, for example, like this, it moves down. How fast does it move down? Well, it moves down at a speed of 15 steps per iteration. So Scratch um, moves in a big loop um, and every time it goes around inside that forever loop it moves 15 steps. So if we wanted the ball to move faster we might just make that uh, 20 or 25. If you wanted to make the ball move slower we could make that 15 in here in the move five steps. Great, so if it hits the edge it's going to bounce off and that's what the if on edge bounce block does. Great, now we're looking at um, interactivity. So we've got an if statement here. So that's covering the situation if the ball sprite is touching the paddle, which is that situation, then it's going to play the sound, which is the water drop, and it's going to pick a random number between 160 and 200 degrees, um, which is essentially is going to be, let's make that a little bit easier to see, essentially going to be somewhere between there and there, you see, to bounce bounce the ball off excellent and then after that it's going to move it's going to jump away from the paddle 15 steps and then this other normal movement will up in this upper loop will come into play now the bottom loop is about the situation where you miss the ball and the sprite hits the red down the bottom and then this if statement covers that scenario. If the sprite is touching the red color down the bottom, then the whole game should stop. Okay, so that's how the game works. We change the costume of that particular sprite. Well, we know how to put a new sprite in. We put a new sprite by going new sprite here and then adding new sprite. But we don't want to add a new sprite. What we want to do is add a different costume to the same sprite. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to click on ball and then up here for each sprite you've got scripts, costumes and sounds. So I'm going to go to the costume and you can see already that there's two different um, costumes in there for that sprite. So I'm just going to choose the green one. Okay. And go back and now that's all there is to it. Okay. It's now changed costume for that sprite. Great. Uh, point two, change the paddle sprite. So let's click on the paddle and let's see if there's any sprites in there. There aren't any co costumes in there. So what we're going to do is go and get a new costume. So if we go and choose one from the library and so a, a costume can be, you choose that from the, okay, so let's just go, what are we looking for? Something that's like a paddle. So anything sort of flattish, um, I might use this blue button here, okay? All right, now it's um, a little bit big, so what I'm going to do is modify that over here. A little bit fat like that, so I'm going to make it like that, okay? All right, now go back and if we go into costumes we can see it's button B. Okay, we can change the name of that. We could call it um, my new paddle. There we go. All right. Great. So let's go back to our task sheet. So that's point two done.
um, change the backdrop. Alrighty, so the stage backdrops are over here. So if we go up to backdrops up here, you can see there's a number of backdrops in there. I could change that to the the red brick, but let's go and get a different one. Um, shall we want something that's not going to hide things? So you want something reasonably light coloured and reasonably plain. So I shall choose um, I shall choose a boardwalk. Okay. Great. So that's going to be the backdrop now. And so if I wanted to put something up there as well, I could put um, anything, that's fine. Okay. All right. So So we want to control the paddle movement with the keyboard arrow now instead of the mouse. So let's go and see where in the code that the paddle is controlled. So the paddle is controlled. It will, you'll have to go and look at the look at the. Not won't be in the ball sprite. It will be in the paddle um, code. Okay. So it's simply setting the x coordinate of the paddle sprite to the X position of the mouse. That's it. Okay, so we don't want to do that. What we want to do is use the keyboard arrows. Okay, so what we're going to do is say change. We'll have to use change. We can't use set because the arrow keys don't have a coordinate like the mouse roller does. Okay, so we're going to have to jump or move, so that would be X. So that would be change X by, okay. And now what we're going to have to do is go and get, in sensing, we're going to have to go and get the key press, okay. So, and we can just select that to, say, left arrow, which would be... Um, this one. So left arrow would mean you'd want to move left, which is change X by negative negative amount. Okay, so let's just start with negative 10. So negative 10. Okay. Now we're going to have to use a uh, control loop. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is go and get an if statement and we will pop that in there and then we will if the left arrow key is pressed, then what you want to do is change the X coordinate of the paddle sprite by negative 10. Okay. Now I to do move right, I'm going to duplicate that and then just pop that in there and make that right arrow and make that positive 10 instead of negative 10. Okay. Now I'm just going to test that. I'm not going to start the whole game. I'm just going to test the control. So yeah, that's about the speed, I think. If I wanted to go a little bit faster, what I could do is make that 15. So I might do that, negative 15 and positive 15. And I'm just going to click on this code snippet. So you see how it moves faster now? So I'm happy with that, okay? So good, so I'm going to click away for a minute and it stops being glowy now. Adjusting the game difficulty comes from two sources. How quickly the paddle responds to your inputs from the keyboard and how quickly the mouse, uh, sorry, the ball moves in its uh, normal movement uh, up and down the screen. So where in the code do those two things come from? Well, the paddle responsiveness is obviously in the paddle code and it's set here. So every time we tap the left or right arrows, the paddle uh, jumps uh, by, in this case, 15. So if we wanted the paddle to be more responsive, then we might increase that to 20 or 25, or if we wanted the paddle to be 
less responsive. So the game would be harder because it's going to be harder to chase the ball. So if we want to make the game harder, then we would decrease the responsiveness of the paddle, which would be making these two numbers in the change x by smaller. Great, so how do we change the speed of the ball? Okay, we go to the ball sprite. Now the general speed of the ball is governed up here in the first loop. So every iteration of the loop, every time scratch goes around, the ball is, the sprite ball is moving uh, 15 steps. So if the ball moves faster, then it's harder to catch it. So and anticipate it. So the ball, the game's going to be harder. So if we make this number here bigger, the game's going to be harder. If we want to make the game easier and make the ball go slower, then we make this number here smaller. What I've noticed, of course, is that there's no red anymore in the in the um, in the backdrop. So the last part of the code where it stops can't work. So what I need to do is go and change the backdrop. So if I click on the backdrop, and what I need to do is, is use the, the editor to put some red in there. So there we go. No writing, excellent. Okay, so let's go back. So now I've got, so I'm just going to have to move that paddle up a little bit. Great. Now what I'm going to have to do is go back to, and I'm going to have to use the color picker again because that will be a different color. So I need to click on the color picker there and then click on that color. Okay, so that should work now. So let's try that. So, yeah. Okay, so the color picker is working, so the game stops straight away. All right, so let's. What I need to do now is I need to annotate the code properly. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. So what's the purpose of the first two uh, blocks? Well, what they do is they position ball at top. Okay. And what this does, it sprite works in degrees, so it's like a clock. So 12 o'clock straight up is zero degrees, and um, it's so it's basically pointing it down. Okay, so point ball. Um, well, it's actually not down; it's off to the side. I'll say sideways. Um, okay. Now this one is going to just put bounce off edges and let's see. That's obvious it's going to play a sound. Um, now why is it a random number? So here when it's touching the paddle, why is it a random number? Well, if you think about it, um, if, it if it wasn't a random number, then it, you'd be able to predict the game because if you told it to say bounce 200 degrees every time, um, it, it would always point in exactly the same angle and so you'd be able to anticipate it. So what it's doing is it's pointing 160 uh, to to um, uh, uh, 200 degrees. Okay, so that's why it's random. So I'm going to explain that. Um, okay. Just like that. Excellent. Um, going to delete that. And I'm going to put a note here about it not working. So I'm going to go color picker breaks after save. So this enables you to stop the game. Use to stop 
game if you miss ball. Okay. So I would call that um, annotated. All right. And then what we need to do is go to the paddle sprite and we need to explain this one here. So what's going on here is let's um, let's test this now. Okay, so we'll put, go to the big screen and go. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's see if it goes out. Yes. Works. Excellent. So now what we're going to do is do an algorithm. So an algorithm is all of the steps and the logic um, that is involved in your program. That's everything that the core tasks um, call for. Thanks very much. The first one is to uh, is to put some sounds, appropriate sounds, for the different actions. So with the ball, the first thing is we need to put some, some sounds. Um, we might want a sound when it hits the paddle and when it gets out. So let's go get two two sounds. So go go up here to sounds and let's find one. So when we I want a new one for yeah, I'm gonna add the zoop. Okay, so I just click on that and go so the zoop is now in there. Yes, if it's too long what you can do is that you can edit and delete um, part of it and that sort of thing. Okay. So I'm fine with that. So let's go get another one. So this new sound is going to be for when it gets out. So I want some sort of you know bad type of um, sound. No, I want um, something uh, chomp maybe. Yep. Okay, the bell. Why don't we do the bell? All right, that'll be good. We'll use that, and yeah, we'll use the bell. Okay, great. So now the bell one's quite long, but that's all right because that's the end of the game. You see, so you don't want a long sound when the paddle is touching the ball because that only lasts for maybe half a second, whereas the end of the game lasts. But even if we want to cut that off a bit, this is how we do it. So we just might select that, go edit and cut that off. So let's play it now. Right. So I'm going to use the bell when the ball hits the red and gets out and I'm going to use the zoop when the paddle hits the ball in that situation. Great. So um, first thing is go back to my scripts and I've now got those sounds that appear now okay so instead of the water drop when it's touching the paddle I want the zoop okay and down here when you've got the ball touching the red I want to go and play the bell so I just need to go to the sound and go and get play sound and Put that in. Actually, I want to play sound until done because otherwise it's going to stop everything before it finishes playing the sound. So, play sound until done, and that's the bell toll. Okay. So, uh, so now I've got sounds, and so let's just test that. Okay. So. Yeah. So the bell toll work but the game didn't stop until the bell finished okay but that's exactly what we told it to do 